I'm Gail McKnight. At the time First Step was started, I was a member of the Westland City Council in the city of Westland. I came to know about it through the efforts of people in the Norwegian community as well as uh, data that was being collected at the Westland Police Department. Well, once they gathered that data, and one of the things that pre-1978, Westland lumped all assault and batteries together. There was no separate category for spouse abuse or domestic violence. So nobody knew how much domestic violence there was. So the now organization of Dearborn uh, got permission from Chief Recklin, which means from Mayor Tom Taylor, to go through the records to categorize what were regular assault and batteries, I punch you with the bar kind of stuff versus domestic violence. And that gave the numbers that they needed to show a basis. Um, Reverend Doug Hodges, who ran the Norwayne Baptist Church in the Westland Norwayne community, knew there was a lot going on in his own community. The Norwayne community started and was built in 1943. It was a place where the workers for the Willow Run plant worked during the war. There were Two-plex, four-plex, it was a huge place. It was tossed up. It was supposed to be temporary housing, but it stayed as permanent housing and became essentially um, not well-kept and uh, renters and not much cared for by the communities at large. And I was on the city council uh, with Justine Barnes, who was a lady who lived in the Norwegian community. She and I had also been involved in the United Foundation um, subset group that looked for projects that needed to be funded. So that's one of the first places I knew about domestic violence issues and other things. Because you gotta find the facts before you can get the funding. And so, Westland as a city recognized we had an issue that needed dealing with. And we had a place, uh, the Dorsey Center, which is a community uh, building within the Norway community. And uh, after President Carter became president, there was money allocated to the communities in what was called CETA, C-E-T-A. I can't tell you what it means anymore other than the last two were Training Act and Westland was eligible for a decent amount of money. And I believe we funded somewhere between three and five people, including a director. And we approved that as part of our budgetary process and that got them going. And Westland has always been a core supporter of First, first Step. and. Uh, so really it was everybody in government came together to do what was a good thing to do, gave people jobs in the community, assisted with dealing with a very relevant topic that needed to be dealt with. I remained on the city council. I became the judge in Westland in 1985, and uh, there was a strong dealing with domestic violence in the community through the, through the court system that domestic violence issues should be dealt with differently than regular assault and batteries. Uh, there was also, from a legal point of view, that we began to, you don't have to have a cooperating victim to have a case go forward, and that takes a lot of the burden off the victim. I think the increase of the uh, opioid crisis has made all of this much more complicated. And uh, so at first step knows, knows how to deal with these cases. And as long as they are welcomed by police departments and by courts, not to be outcome oriented, but to do what's necessary so that you minimize the chance of somebody dying. There came a time that the county gave you the old house um, that's by the mill uh, in Heinz Park 
and that was an, uh, a good place. First Step still had no place to send people as victims. There was no shelter. So First Step, you know, money had to be allocated to get them into a hotel or somewhere. So we knew we needed to have a place. And in the end, we found this place out in the country, uh, west, west of the paved roads in Wayne County. And it was a big old building. Uh, it wasn't a perfect building, but it could be ours. And first step moved there, and that was in the stage where, where, where the shelter was, was always kept private. So people didn't know. Um, and it was really wonderful to have a place for people that they could be. Now it wasn't perfect, it was dormitory style, you know, with curtains between different families. But there was programs for the children who were there, time for the mothers, different things that could be done. And that was a huge, huge deal. Um, in terms of people who were on the board to begin with, Justine Barnes, who was on the council with me, was involved initially in the board. She then became elected, was elected to the state representative office, and she always assisted First Step uh, with, with funding, not only as its own agency, but for other domestic violence. She was a great advocate for domestic violence. Um, there were uh, the Greenstein brothers, um, both of them were lawyers, were lawyers um, and they were an interesting addition uh, to the First Step Board. There were other lawyers, there were some social workers. Mary Ann Quinn, who was a juvenile court referee, uh, joined the board and was on it for several years. What we discovered was it was a secret crime. And so because it wasn't categorized and because it was just an assault and battery, when the victim didn't show up at a court, a court date, like if a victim doesn't show up at a bar fight, just got dismissed. Oh, well, you know, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. And I think, you know, domestic violence is sort of like can breast cancer was until Betty Ford talked about it. It was something secret, so I think the deal is to break the cycle, and that's what First Step and uh, the other agencies have been strong, and I think First Step, as well as the other agencies in the other counties, get good reception from their local uh, township boards or, or, or city councils and mayors because they recognize you are a huge asset for them. I, I would... Uh, would say that the people at First Step that I have encountered over 40 years, that the volunteers and the staff uh, are all pretty amazing people in terms of their willingness to give to the cause. Now some of it may be a personal life experience, it may be that they see the needs of the children more than the needs of the mom, it just sort of whatever is in their background who causes them to come. I mean, uh, I look at here at Teresa Biso, who was on our board and then had a very successful career and changed her mind. And she joined First Step and here she is many, many years later. So it caused a lot of people who were connected with it to make different decisions in all of the communities First Step serves are better for all these people who just keep plugging away. Uh, because getting victims to change is just about as complicated as getting defendants to change. And that's so true, whether it's domestic violence, it's alcohol issues, uh, drug issues. It's a, it's a family disease. It becomes a disease of the family in relationships. Yep. So bless their heart, all the people who work and volunteer here. Happy anniversary, first step on your 40th anniversary, how the time has flown.